Kira, and you're watching Dante's Boxing Nation. I told you just a minute ago that there's a lot inside this arsenal that I can give. And yes, I have a better Mexican style than Triple G. I got a cast iron chin, and it hasn't been tested. A Triple G hasn't been tested. So definitely, yeah. oh yeah, this is a pleasure, I love it. <coughs> hey, taking a blow ain't the best thing to do, but hey, honestly, you give me the best one you got and I can show you just how I can take it and I can give it even better. Dante's Boxing Nation, what's going on guys? So following the Gennady Golovkin versus David Lemieux fight, there was a fighter on that undercard that was at the press conference who won his fight. And he went up to the podium, he went up to the podium, and said, I am now the IBF mandatory for Gennady Golovkin. I have a cast iron chin. I can take a punch. Can Golovkin take a punch? Oh yeah. And I have a better Mexican style than Gennady Golovkin. This is what Toriano Johnson said. Now for those of you guys who don't know who Toriano Johnson is, he's a fighter out of the Bahamas. He actually went over to Cuba to enhance his boxing skills matter of fact I myself even thought about taking my son over to Cuba for a couple of months so he can learn from the best for those of you guys who don't know the Cubans are the best when it comes to amateur boxing but anyway Toriano Johnson he went over there to learn from the best he wanted to improve on his defense because he was always an aggressive fighter so he wanted to improve on his defense and his boxing Okay, now Johnson, he has a record of 19-1 and one with 13 knockouts. His one loss is against Curtis Stevens, a fight that he was winning on all the scorecards and the referee stopped the fight in the 10th round. It was a very controversial stoppage, but it was a stoppage. Okay, so with that all being said, now you know a little bit more about Toriano Johnson. Let's talk about him possibly fighting against Gennady Golovkin. You know, I find this fight very interesting, and I really look forward to watching this fight. This would be another step up in the right direction for Golovkin if he takes this fight. Trainer Abel Sanchez already said he loves the uh, Toriano Johnson fight. So this fight will most likely happen because we've already heard recently Canelo Alvarez he said he's not fighting um, Golovkin unless Golovkin comes down to 155. Golovkin said he ain't going down to 155. He's only fighting at 160. Miguel Cotto's trainer, he just recently said that we don't want to fight Golovkin next. We want to fight someone else. So it's looking like there's a very good chance Golovkin may be fighting his mandatory Toriano Johnson. Now I want to talk about Toriano Johnson saying that he has a better Mexican style than Gennady Golovkin. First of all, this Mexican style stuff is getting old. It's getting real old. This is what Gennady Golovkin started. He came up with the moniker Mexican style. The reason why I say it's getting old is because for one, Golovkin himself, he's not even fighting Golovkin style in every fight. The first time, he went in the ring with a power puncher. He abandoned Mexican style. And quite frankly, if you really think about it, there's not too many top Mexican fighters that are fighting Mexican style today. Because if we're stereotyping what Mexican style is, it would most likely be a Julio Cesar Chavez, a Margarito, a Brandon Rios, a fighter who comes face first, flat footed, very aggressive, right? He'll eat about three punches so he can land like his five or six. This is pretty much what traditional Mexican style would consist of. Okay? You look at someone like Canelo Alvarez. He's in the ring doing the shoulder roll. He's in the ring doing using foot movement, circling around the ring. You look at Juan Manuel Marquez. He's counter punching. He's taking steps back. He circles around the ring. Okay? There ain't nobody fighting like that today, not really, not that's dominant. The only fighter you have fighting today is Brandon Rios and Margarito, who's attempting to make his comeback. 
and don't get it twisted, I'm not comparing Rios and Margarito to Chavez. I'm only talking about the styles. Remember, two fighters can have the same style and one guy could be garbage, but they just have the same style, okay? And speaking of this Mexican style, I remember I had someone post a comment in the comment section and said some stuff like, don't forget Salvador Sanchez was Mexican. You know, he said it as if Salvador Sanchez's style was Mexican style. And if that's the case, that contradicts the whole Mexican style. Because Salvador Sanchez was a boxer. Salvador Sanchez, he relied on foot movement. In fact, if it wasn't for the color of Salvador Sanchez's skin, fans today would say he was a runner. Okay? So, let's get the facts straight when it comes to what Mexican style is supposed to mean. Matter of fact, even my friend that was on a radio show, Carlos Morales, he even said, no man, Mexican style is aggressive, being in front of someone with heart, taking shots, to give shots, etc, etc. That's what Mexican style is supposed to mean. It's not supposed to just mean you're just Mexican and you could do anything in the ring. You could run around the ring, you could do the shoulder roll, you could float like a butterfly, sting like a bee, but as long as you're Mexican, it's Mexican style. It does not work that way. So right now, that Gennady Golovkin slash Mexican style thing is getting old really fast. Now let me go back to Toriano Johnson. Now guys, like I was saying earlier, this would be a good fight. This would be a very, very interesting fight. Now, if you guys don't remember, I did a prediction video when it comes to Golovkin versus Lemieux. Because of Lemieux's style, I told you guys in that prediction fight, in the prediction video, way before the fight, that Golovkin is gonna come out, he's gonna surprise everyone. And he's not gonna fight Mexican style. He is going to box in this fight. He's gonna be using his jab, He's gonna be trying to slip punches. He's gonna be using a little bit of foot movement. He's gonna be floating like a butterfly and stinging like a bee. This is exactly what I said was gonna happen and that is exactly what happened. Matter of fact, the only thing that I didn't expect is for Golovkin to be that reluctant. I expected him to be reluctant, but not that reluctant. Not just stay behind the jab the whole night. I expected him to maybe start off with the jab, and then every now and then, jump on the inside with combinations and then get this guy out. But Golovkin, he didn't want to go on the inside at all because of David Lemieux's power. Now, when I did some interviews, we had um, heavyweight Marcellus Williams. I basically said to him, your boy Golovkin, he almost looked like Floyd Mayweather in there. And Marcella said that's exactly how he looked. He was in there jabbing, slipping punches. It was no Mexican style, so on and so forth. Now, when he said that, the majority of people in the comment section agreed with that assessment. But, of course, there's always the small percent that disagree. And the Floyd Mayweather detractors, they were saying stuff like, no way did he fight like Floyd Mayweather. He wasn't in there holding and running and all this kind of stuff. Like, you know, like, of course, like, that's all Floyd does is just holds. Like, he's Vladimir Klitschko, which we know that's totally false. But anyway, this is what they said. So, what they're saying, basically, is they don't believe, these decafs, that is, these decafs, they don't believe that Golovkin would ever hold in the ring. Now, before I explain what I expect to see Golovkin doing in a Toriano Johnson fight, let me just give you guys... A little history in the sport of boxing. Did you guys know that the great Roberto Duran was a notorious clincher? Did you guys know that? This man was a notorious clincher. And if I have time, I may add the pictures to this video right now. If not, I'll add them on another video. But he was a notorious clincher. You go back and you watch Roberto Duran against Sugar Ray Leonard. Watch him against, especially against Wilfredo Benitez. Oh my goodness. Watch him against that in that fight. Watch him against Marvin Hagler. But in the Wilfredo Benitez fight, and, and what's funny with the Wilfredo Benitez fight, if you guys ever wanted to know how a Mayweather versus Duran fight would look, watch that fight. Duran versus Wilfredo Benitez. 
So the point that I'm making is Roberto Duran was a clincher. Manny Pacquiao has clinched in a lot of his fights against Brandon Rios, against Antonio Margarito, against Tim Bradley in the first fight. He did a lot of holding in those fights, right? Ricky Hatton was known for clinching, right? He was known as Floyd Mayweather would always call him. He was a wrestler, right? So the point that I'm making is people try to stereotype and try to make it seem like only certain fighters hold and etc cetera, etc cetera. holding has gone all the way back to the inception of the sport what you decaps don't understand and i'm gonna educate you right now styles make fights and usually when you see a very aggressive pressure fighter against a mid-range puncher or a long-range puncher you're going to see some clinching okay case in point Lucas Matisse, he's not known for holding, right? But when he got in the ring with a very aggressive pressure fighter like Ruslan Provotnikov, we seen a different side of Lucas Matisse. We seen a lot of holding. We seen a lot of foot movement. We seen a lot of boxing and thinking from Lucas Matisse because his opponent forced him to change his game. To survive okay now when it comes to Golovkin Golovkin he has clinched before in other fights he just hasn't done it that much the reason why he hasn't done it that much is because he hasn't had to do it that much usually Gennady Golovkin goes in there as the sole power puncher he's the aggressor right but what's gonna happen when Golovkin is in the ring with a very aggressive fighter who's gonna put their head in his chest and just smother Golovkin the entire night. What's gonna happen then? See, you know, when, when people say, oh, you know, Golovkin, he didn't clinch like Mayweather in the Golovkin fight, he didn't have to clinch Lemieux. Why would he clinch Lemieux? Lemieux is fighting from a distance, a long distance. Lemieux is an aggressive fighter, but he's fighting long range. Right? So Lemieux, in essence, he's doing exactly what Golovkin wants him to do. He stands far away so Golovkin can pepper him with that great jab that Golovkin has. He's doing everything that Golovkin wants him to do. I mean, think about it. If Maidana would have fought Floyd Mayweather the same way Lemieux fought Golovkin, there would be no clinching in the Mayweather Maidana fight either. Why? Because Maidana will be staying at the exact distance that Floyd wants him to stay at. So Floyd can land his straight punches. So he could kill him with the jab. So he could kill him with that beautiful right hand. Etc. Etc. Right? So the point that I'm making to you guys is I believe in this Golovkin versus Johnson fight, you're going to see another new side of Golovkin that you guys are not used to seeing. I believe in this fight, you are going to see Golovkin rely on the clinch. You're going to see Golovkin tying up Johnson. So for all you guys that said, oh, he, don't, he doesn't do what Mayweather does, Mayweather holds and this and that, you're going to see holding by Golovkin in this fight. I can almost guarantee you, you're going to see it. Because of the simple fact that Johnson is a power puncher, just like David Lemieux. But that's where the similarities end. One of the main differences is Toriano Johnson is almost the same height as Golovkin. David Lemieux, when you, you see him when they stood next to each other, David Lemieux was a lot shorter, had a much shorter reach. Toriano Johnson is not going to have that disadvantage going into this fight. Another difference is, like I said before, Johnson is going to be on you like a cheap suit, okay? He's going to put so much pressure on you, it's going to be hard for you to breathe. He'll be in there like James Kirkland said. I want to be on you so close, I want people to think we're fucking. Okay? This is Toriano Johnson's style. Now, this, this doesn't guarantee he can beat Golovkin, but I'm just saying this is his style. It will pose more problems for Gennady Golovkin. This will force Gennady Golovkin 
to have to clinch in this fight. There, you know, there was one, there was one moment you guys can go back and watch the fight when Golovkin was fighting against Marco Antonio Rubio. There was one incident where Golovkin, he was getting his punches off, he was engaging, and all of a sudden, Rubio just decided to throw caution to the wind and really go on some Mexican style stuff and just through a combination, you know, tried to exchange with Golovkin. And soon as Rubio tried to exchange with Golovkin, Golovkin immediately reached out to grab Rubio. Okay? I'm expecting to see a lot of that in this fight. Toriano Johnson is a very aggressive fighter. Not only is he aggressive, but he is quick. And I say he's quick because a lot of power punchers are usually wide and they telegraph a lot of stuff that they're throwing. But Toriano Johnson, he's not really a slow foot plotting type of fighter. He will leap on you. He will leap on you with speed to where a lot of times you can't even time it. You can't time his attacks because you never really know when he's going to leap in on you. So I think because of that reason, this fight is going to be competitive for as long as it lasts. Now, the one flaw that I, I noticed in um, Toriano Johnson's arson is the fact that he puts his head down a lot and he leaves himself open for uppercuts. And that could be bad for him against Gennady Golovkin. Toriano Johnson, he watched Gennady Golovkin versus David Lemieux. And he said it was very important. He needed to watch that fight, he said, because he learned a lot more about Golovkin. And he's seen a lot of opportunities that he could take advantage of so I look forward to seeing this fight guys I mean of course it's not it's not Golovkin versus Ward it's not Golovkin versus Laura even but this will be a good fight this will be a very good fight and I will give Golovkin a lot of props if he can knock this guy out or beat him this is a tough opponent this this will I would say this guy is going to be tougher than anyone that Golovkin has faced up to date. Okay? So, once again, look out for the clinches. I expect Golovkin to clinch in this fight. I even expect him to move back in this fight. Because he's going to be dealing with a serious pressure fighter. That's all I got for now. I'm on to the next one.